Have you ever considered the ways the devil tempts you? Hello, BT family. Today we look at the temptation of Jesus. There are some practical lessons to learn about the spirit realm, and I think we should take them to heart. We can learn important things from this about the spiritual battle that goes on around us. But first, we're going to pray together, and then we're going to jump into the scripture. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to be present with us as we open your word. Uh, we ask you to speak to us. We ask you to show us what we need to see today from you. And Lord, I, I pray for everyone that's joining us today, everyone that, that joins us in this devotional today, in this scripture reading today, that you're with them that you give them peace and comfort if they need it, that you challenge them and build them up where they need it. Give, them, give us what we need each day to be your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Let's read. Luke 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all of the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. I was recently speaking with somebody who was uh, going through a difficult time in their life. The silver lining for them, though, was that after enduring this trial, they could better help others. They could have compassion and empathize in ways that they never could before. I've talked about, I've talked about this before on this channel, um, about how in my 20s I lost my first wife to cancer. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with men who lost their spouse because I get it. I, I know what they're going through. And, and we can have that connection and we can relate. Sometimes we refer to each other as being in the club, the people who are uh, sharing a similar life experience and can relate in a unique way. When it comes to matters of obedience and temptation, Jesus himself felt the pain and suffering and actually experienced the same things that we do. Hebrews 2 says that he had to be like his brothers and sisters in every way so that he could become a merciful and faithful high priest. And then the next verse says that he himself has suffered when he was tempted. So he is able to help those who are tempted. So he can empathize with us. He's in the club with you and with me. I start with that today because, yes, I want us to be comforted that Jesus knows where we're at. And if that's new for you, if that's totally new, feel free to stop right there and chew on that all day. Send us a note so we can talk with you about that. But I also want us to see that the temptation Jesus experienced, well, that has relevance for us and for our own temptations. This is a story of Jesus being fully human and fully God, 
but it's also a story that clearly depicts a spiritual battle. We should look closely at these examples of the enemy attacking Jesus because they give us a window into what attacks on our own selves might just look like. What ways the enemy attacks our own faith and our own obedience. So, let's look at the temptations. The first temptation, the offer of bread. Jesus was hungry. Remember, he's human and he experienced what we experience and he went for without food for 40 days. He's famished. And I think this might be a subtle temptation from the devil. The devil says, I know you're hungry. Just use your power to your advantage this time and make that stone into bread. But using miraculous power to make bread isn't exactly the temptation here. Jesus fed thousands of people by miraculously reproducing food on other occasions. But this time, Jesus knows he was supposed to be hungry and rely on his Father for provision. It was part of his preparation for ministry. Making bread would have been a demonstrable lack of trust on his part. If that one's confusing, don't sweat it. I'll try to expand more in the comments. Let's jump to the next temptation. We have a huge switch up here. No more subtlety. Jesus was taken to a high point where he could see the world as they knew it. The devil makes a massive false promise, offering to give him absolute rule of this world, which wasn't really the devil's to give, in exchange for Jesus's worship. He unsuccessfully tries to appeal to fleshly desires for authority and splendor. Lastly, having been defeated twice by Scripture, the devil tries now to use Scripture to his advantage. He twists the meaning of Psalm 91, 11, and 12, suggesting that Jesus should leap down from a high place to test God's protection of him. If Jesus were to succumb to this temptation, He would be testing God, which would be as if Jesus didn't fully trust God. So what do we see here? The devil, what does he do in these these, uh, three temptations? He he plays on our pain points first. He, He subtly persuades us to change from God's plan. Maybe a little change of plan for a loaf of bread was okay. So subtle. Inflation this year is 7%, and perhaps I didn't get a 7% raise, and things are getting tighter financially. Maybe I need to take some shortcuts. Times are hard. I fudge a little bit on my taxes. Or maybe I decide to not include my tips uh, that I earned when I was a, a server in a restaurant this summer. Or I borrow a friend's digital subscription when the terms of service clearly say for one household. So subtle. Subtle opportunities for disobedience that are around every corner. The devil also makes false promises, like like he can give you the world. One huge example of this is that he tries to convince us that he can offer happiness. More money will make you happy, or better clothes, or a better car. Maybe it's abuse of substances that will make you happy, or abuse of food. Maybe it's being unfaithful to a spouse because you've been persuaded that you're not happy there, and you can find happiness somewhere else. In fact, sex and sexuality is where you can find a massive bed of lies from the enemy especially in my context here in the United States. We see all sorts of distortions to what God's plan for sexuality actually is. People are always better off with God's way, and the devil is always committed to persuading you otherwise. He's the father of lies. As John Mark Comer puts it, quote, his go-to signature move is deception. He's full of tricks. I challenge you today to think through the assumptions you have about your happiness. Are they rooted in truth? Stick with us in the scriptures. It's not always easy to see what assumptions we might have that are misguided. 
But as we keep coming back to Jesus each day, we pray that he shows up and then he shows us just that. See you next time.